How are y'all doing? Welcome back to Easy Beast Kitchen. My name is Tim Broxton. Tonight I'm going to show you an amazing dry rub. Okay, we're going to put this dry rub together for some pork spare ribs that are going to be slow cooked on the grill tomorrow. I'm going to go play a little golf, put them on at 9 in the morning, come back from golf, I'll have dinner ready. It's just really unbelievable. Okay, they turn out perfect every time. Hardwood, hickory smoke, and this rub are gonna produce some of the finest ribs you've ever had, okay? Now, <clears throat> dry rubs are very common in the South, particularly in Tennessee, North Carolina, and Georgia. Places like Memphis, sometimes they don't even use a barbecue sauce. They focus and rely heavily on this dry rub, okay? Me, personally, I like the combination of both. I like having a nice, sweet, and savory sauce, and I also like having this combination of sweet and savory in my, in my dry rub. So this is how we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to put it together, it's very simple. The first ingredient is brown sugar, okay? I've got light brown sugar, you can use dark if you'd like. You don't wanna use brown sugar in a dry rub if you're gonna be doing some high heat cooking or searing. This is only for slow cooking because this stuff will burn and not really produce the results you're looking for, okay? The next thing we're gonna throw in is some ground white pepper, and we're gonna put about uh, a quarter teaspoon in there. Ground white pepper is gonna give it a nice pop, but we're also gonna be putting in a little cinnamon. All right, this cinnamon is gonna be that got you ingredient. People have a number of times commented on how good they thought my ribs were you know and what's the secret etc uh, I think this cinnamon is the secret okay I've never seen it in many of the dry rubs offered in the store the reason we're making this here is so we can control what goes in it you don't see MSG uh, or anything you won't see anything of that nature tonight the next thing we're gonna do is take a little onion powder I think this is pretty much critical in all dry rubs, especially down here in the south. This is gonna give it that zing, that zest. It's very nice. Um, the next thing, and that was about half a teaspoon. Next thing is a half teaspoon of black pepper. So we have both white pepper and black pepper, okay? It's like ebony and ivory. Mexican style chili powder. Why am I using Mexican style chili powder? Mexican style chili powder has cumin already in it, okay? Perfect, perfect for this dry rub right here. And we're gonna use nearly a half teaspoon, just shy. Okay, our next ingredient is gonna be paprika. Paprika is another one of those just instrumental ingredients in a good dry rub. And we're gonna use about a quarter teaspoon of that because we're gonna be kicking it up big time right here with some fresh ground cayenne pepper, okay? We're gonna use an entire half teaspoon. You can use more if you like really spicy ribs, but in combination with the cumin and Mexican chili powder, half a teaspoon's all you're gonna need. And I'm gonna tell you right now, when you're putting this in, this stuff will light you up, okay? When you go to blending all this stuff, that, like I'm gonna do in just a minute, you're gonna wanna stand back because the powder that rises from this bowl when you mix all this stuff up will truly shake you up, all right? The next thing is gonna be salt. Now salt is a very common ingredient in most all dry rubs, even at specialty stores. The great thing about making your own dry rub at home is that you can control what goes in it, all right? Not only that, but you can tell your friends, hey, I made this from scratch. The satisfaction that we all get from cooking as cooks and home cooks, it's just, I made this, it's like, a, it's my art to you with love, okay? Back to the dry rubs that you find at the store, if you look at the ingredient list on most of those rubs, salt is the number one ingredient. Why? Because it's inexpensive, it's cheap, and we just don't want that much salt in here. That's just simply too much. I think uh, this, fractionally speaking, is a very small portion of this rub, okay? So, very heart healthy rub right here. 
All right, our last and final ingredient and another instrumental spice right here is cumin. And we're gonna go for a full teaspoon. Even though our Mexican chili powder already has cumin in it, you gotta have this. Cumin is a incredible spice associated with uh, chili. Uh, it gives it that oomph. That is just what you need for your ribs, is that oomph, because when you bite into them, you want an explosion of flavor, and that's what this rub is gonna do, okay? It's gonna provide you incredible flavor. So, like I say, when you go to mix this stuff up, make sure you stand back and don't breathe very deeply because you'll be taking in a little more pepper than you want to. And I have an example of what this rub looks like when it's finally finished. You can see it's a very pretty rub. It has a nice, nice color to it, nice texture. And you can stick your finger in it, taste it, and it's not too much to handle. If you can't do that, then you've got too much pepper in there. And if you make it just the way I showed you, it'll come out exactly like you want it. Okay, here is our beautiful rack of ribs. These are pork spare ribs. They've been trimmed nicely. You can see it's got a beautiful flap of meat on the back of them. You want to make sure now that you're working with pork, okay, that you don't stick your hands in your rub and put it on and then stick your hands back in the rub and try to save any of this reserve rub, okay? If you're trying to save what's in this bowl, use a spoon or simply pour it on like I'm doing right now, okay? And you want to coat these ribs up very thoroughly. And just like the name implies, you know, Rub it in, that's what we're doing here. You just massage it right into the meat. Working in there, it's gonna accept all those flavors. I mean, the sugar, the garlic, all of this, the, the cinnamon, everything. It just smells incredible. We're gonna take those, flip them over, and make sure we do the same thing, a good thorough coating on the back. And I'm gonna tell you, there's a lot of love in this rub, okay? Just fantastic. All right, so once you get it rubbed in, you even wanna make sure you get those areas by the bones. I mean, you want it all. You want this rib, this, these ribs to really be rubbed up nicely. Now you can see that's ready for the grill, okay? And that rub that we made is slightly more than what we needed but it could actually do two racks of ribs. The music you've been hearing tonight is Elizabeth and the Catapult. They're a really great band. This is off their album, Taller Children. Check them out.